Good morning, YouTube. We finally reached KP9, which means we are officially in a geomagnetic storm level 5. And for those of you who wonder what this means, well, let me just read you the most important part um, of the problems that can occur in a um, storm level 5. So, widespread voltage control problems, protective system problems can occur, but here is the interesting part. Some grid systems may experience complete collapse or blackouts. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have um, the possibility to see blackouts um, happening in the world here and there, because transformers may experience damage when ground current uh, where ground currents are the most uh, intense ground-induced current. So there you have it. I will leave, leave a link in the description for those of you who are interested in reading um, the description, but also um, about solar radiation storms and radio blackouts. So you can read this at your leisure. So um, this is the most important part that I want to discuss now, because I couldn't have access in my first video to the magnetosphere simulation from the NASA ISWA signets. So let's go to the beginning and see what happens. This is normal conditions until 17 UTC. And you will see this. There it is. This is the first impact, um, major impact of that CME. And you can see briefly a wall of plasma that hits our magnetosphere and instantly the um, closed feed lines are compressed as you can see and at some point they almost completely disappear and as we move along we will see successions of a plasma dense plasma uh, waves hitting our magnetosphere and um, we can see energy uh, closes in um, to geosynchronous orbit, but you will see this more clearly in an instant in the other simulation. So we have lots, lots of waves, wave after wave of um, dense plasma clouds, which um, hit our Earth, I think, at 700 kilometers a second. Um, this isn't the fastest solar wind, but definitely a very dense one, which explains why um why we have i mean take a look at this um field lines are all over the place you have intermagnetic field lines which are connected to the sun you have the closed field lines that are um all over the place um plasma hitting our earth take a look at the density of this plasma this is unbelievable so we have extreme conditions. Um, take a look at this. We are literally um, swimming in the plasma clouds that are hitting our planet. And thus we have extreme conditions. So let's take a look at um, the two other simulations I want to show. Um, this is actually just a plot of the magnetopause stand of distance. You can see the magnetosphere, the bow shock reaches geosynchronous orbit um, when the impact happens. And this has major implications. This means we could also see damage to satellites, or maybe all the satellites um, that uh, will fail completely in uh, geomagnetic storm level 5. W once again, we can see the bow shock. And here you can actually see clearly what is plotted in this um, map. So let me just close this one and show you. So these are normal conditions, as you can see, until we reach 17 UTC, which is about now. There it is. And it compresses the magnetosphere instantly. So this is a very dense uh, cloud which pushes the bow shock well within this dotted line which represent the geosynchronous orbit. This is where satellites are orbiting Earth inside this dotted line. And as you can see, it goes there multiple times and it goes well within it. So yes, we might see damage to satellites. Um, so we have to be on the lookout.
And I will leave a link for these simulations in the description. Uh, for those of you who are interested in viewing this um, when you have the time. So there you have it, what um, the NASA ISWA um, concerns. And I really do love um, this simulations because it shows so much more information than the NOAA Prediction Center. So, oh, yes, and another thing for those of you who are interested in these plots, these are actually magnetic disturbances. Um, there are three simulations, and I will leave again a link uh, below in the description for those of you interested. What I also wanted to show um, is the uh, endless spiral because it has been updated and um, we can actually see new developments. So, let me just yes adjust this um this is what we what you already know if you saw my first video we have this cannibalized cme that hits our planet this is what is happening now and let me just forward to the 11th so we are at the densest part this is why we have a kp9 um, of the plasma cloud which is hitting our planet but we have also inbound cmes and we almost had an identical similar situation. Um, we will almost have an identical simulation um, tomorrow when almost two CMEs do the exact same thing and form one when they hit our planet. This is shown over here. So this is maybe not the densest plasma cloud as the previous one, but we do have an increase. And let me just go back. You can see it, it becomes white. And white means, white grayish means 900 to 1000 kilometers a second. But when it reaches our planet, we will only have 900 kilometers a second, or almost 900 kilometers a second. So we will have an increase increase in speed um, and this will affect our already weakened uh, magnetosphere will it reach again a kp9 i don't know um, this remains to be seen on the 12th um, and there is also one which is not already plotted um, we did so the uh, we did have so this is the proton uh, flux um, this is the magneto the magnetometer so the magnetic disturbance in our magnetosphere and what i wanted to show is oh yes the this so we do have a new x and i think it's an x5 flare yes um 4.5 5.7 5.7 so we do have a new extra the strongest one yet associated with a cme um which will probably reach us further but it is not already plotted in this uh, simulation we will see uh when this happens i think maybe the 13th or the 14th we, we might get a glancing blow so this sunspot is still firing um since about 36.64 is still putting up a show. And let me show you in seven days what it has done. It's absolutely magnificent. All these flares. Um, and I just hope it survives the rotation of the sun because then when it reappears, we will have again um, lots of things to talk about. So this is the um, Ohoho full. And as you can see, um, people in canada will be mesmerized uh, but also parts of the united states with beautiful display of auroras and i will get to that in a second where you can actually see all this um, but let's talk about ground induced currents this is actually the most important part of the video because um it almost reaches the maximum so as you can see these are increments each time multiplied by 10 and this is the intensity of these ground induced currents so uh, purple means that it is um it has a value of thousand or put simply you have a thousand times more ground induced currents in this color scheme in the purple than in the blue one and let me go to the beginning and show you so there are parts which, which will experience um intense ground induced currents so i have already experienced because 
Um, this happens, let me see the timestamp. Uh, yes, at um, today after midnight, this is 1 a.m. in the morning. Most of the extreme induced currents will be on the eastern parts of the United States. I don't know why this is, but if you live in this part, in the eastern side of the US, you might experience blackouts. Because as you will see, we have multiple... Oh yes, and um, up north of the United States, so you see, especially here, this is almost whitish of color, and this is again an increment multiply multiplied. This is a thousand multiplied by thousand so ten ten no thousand multiplied by ten ten thousand times more ground currents than the blue parts so um there is definitely a potential for blackouts again take a look at all this in these regions as you live over here in the united states you will experience uh, you might experience blackouts. And this might happen all over the world at different locations because this is only of the United States. But keep in mind, um, for example, let me just put the plot of Canada and run this. Now oh, wait, let me just put a little stop to it and go slowly. So you see there are multiple uh, parts which will experience these intense ground current um, like here, for example, intense, a big region that will experience ground-induced currents. And this means everywhere when you see this purple, there is um, the possibility for blackouts or at least um, problems with the grid. Uh, outages, uh, probably just temporary, but maybe damage to transformators and such. But since the grid is all connected, um, when power is lost somewhere, uh, it will just be replenished with other uh, parts. So the blackouts won't last very long. Um, you might experience some uh, outages in these regions, but don't be scared. Um, this is not going to be something permanent or anything like that. But still, um, the possibility is there. So there you have it. Um, I will leave a link, of course, uh, because this is very important, of this model uh, in the description. Uh, we do have a, a new Excel, very strong. Um, so we will be on the lookout. And I'm pretty sure that um, since Pot 3664 will produce more um, X flares as it exits the visible side of the sun so this is the real-time image gallery and the images are absolutely exquisite uh, let me just click on one so you can click and view all these uh, images as you please and as you can see there are a lot of them and i like the purple color of the auroras um, it's not just um, the typical green that we are seeing we have lots of beautiful displays so i will leave a link to this um, real-time image gallery so you can check that out at the moment of speaking there are few um, large earthquakes in fact there isn't any but keep in mind there's always a little bit of delay before it kicks in so we have to be on the lookout uh, for the possibility of large earthquakes um, happening in the coming days um, this is very important because um, CMEs practically always, after they happen, uh, produce large earthquakes. Maybe not immediately, but it can happen in the days or even weeks uh, ahead. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. And I will be making new videos um, as the situation progresses, especially on the 12th, because there we will have, um, and I will show you, a new impact, as I mentioned it earlier. This, um, let's go a little bit back. So now we are here, the first impact, the major one. Uh, but then we will reach a much faster uh, solar wind speed, maybe not the densest uh, plasma density, but we will be hit again and then we will see how Earth uh, manages to 
block uh, this uh, solar wind, uh, whether we will have a new geomagnetic storm, probably yes we will, but maybe not a KP uh, geomagnetic storm level 5, we will see. Thank you for watching and I guess I see you next time, bye bye.